Okay, Arturo, are we good? Ready, lovely. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, and sorry for keeping you waiting a little bit. This is, a, this is happening live, and as we speak, we've just uh, actually find, come from a, a meeting where we were able to um, confirm the existence and move, agree on steps forward for the Africa Growth Platform. My name is Oliver Kahn. I'm Head of Strategic Communications at the World Economic Forum. I've got a great panel here, all, all of whom are going to offer some unique and personal insights into why they're involved in this, uh, this platform. We did announce the Africa Growth Platform last week, for those of you with eagle eyes. It's, it's a key um, initiative that, that we hope is going to form you know, not just a, a solid outcome of the meeting, but a real kind of uh, central strand of conversation and impact as we go from this meeting in towards Davos, bring in the, and, and, and helping entrepreneurs all the way across the region. We only have about 25 minutes left, so I'm going to keep my remarks to the minimum. We'll go to each of our panelists for two or three uh, insights each, and then we'll have lots of questions from you. It's a really important one, so I encourage you to get your questions ready. Um, my first panelist is Elsie Kanza. You're the head of Africa at the World Economic Forum, and um, you've been the driving force, if I may say, behind the Africa Growth Platform. So within the context of the, 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 the current times we live in, tell us why this is so important for you and for this meeting. Uh, thank you, Oli. Uh, if we go back two years ago, you may recall that we were talking about inclusive growth. That was part of the, the main theme uh, for the summit that took place in Durban here in South Africa. The major concern still being uh, regionally as well as globally, that while we were investing more and achieving growth rates that are pretty high on average in Africa, uh, it was not translating into the creation of jobs. And we have tens of millions of young Africans joining the labor market every year. So since then, in collaboration uh, with our leading business platform, the Africa Regional Business Council, we essentially applied our minds, um, and particularly the minds of, of business, because growth comes from business, about how we could go about um, supporting the ecosystem for small businesses, SMEs, which is really where many, most jobs are created uh, globally when you look at the evidence. And so this essentially uh, snowballed into the Africa Growth Platform that we see today. So it's been a journey that's, that's taken a while. Uh, a lot of research and discussions about what works or what doesn't. Um, looking also in particular at interventions by governments, uh, by big businesses, by foundations and um, also investors uh, that, are, that have been keen in supporting, for instance, um, uh, accelerators or startup hubs and, and really querying what was missing. And a key part of that was missing is a collaboration among the different actors, a lot of fragmentation, duplication, and therefore limited impact. So the really exciting uh, part about this initiative is that it is uh, we have entrepreneurs at the center of it. We're really looking at things from the point of view of the SMEs and small businesses. And then we have this collection of actors that are willing to combine their forces and say, what can we do together so that we can reach 100 million small businesses over the next five years and help them grow? Great. And Elsie, you talk about interventions and uh, the, the challenge of, of having more interventions and getting people working together in the right kind of way. What are we expecting? What do you expect? public sector and the private sector to do together to, to, you know, to, to create this, uh, this momentum? In the short run, our main focus uh, also with the key partners is, uh, is on quick wins. What do we know is already working, uh, working in the region, uh, working globally? Um, why is it that you can set up a business in Rwanda in a couple of hours and in other places can take you a year, right? So that, those are easy quick wins. Uh, pay the small businesses on time. Uh, we have culprits in the public sector as well as the private sector. A lot of our small businesses are being squeezed because they have no working capital. That is easier to implement. Um, further up the spectrum, you have countries like Tunisia and Mali where they have startup acts. Uh, why don't we learn from them? You know, how did they get so far where you have a legislative framework um, that deliberately is targeted at supporting small businesses? So in the short run, this is the primary area of focus. Let's focus on what's easy, where you can go and see how they made it happen, what the impact was. And then as we go further along, for sure, we're going to have to deal with the harder issues. Infrastructure is still an issue, just basic energy, transport, roads, and water. And this is feedback from the small businesses themselves. Great, fantastic. So before we go to questions, let's just uh, talk to four of the key um, members of the platform from the private sector. So I'm honored to be joined by Theo Sibia, partner and head of Africa at AT 
Kearney, Brian Wong, Vice President of Global Initiatives at Alibaba Group, based in uh, China, also a young global leader here at the World Economic Forum. Um, Dr. James Mwangi, Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Equity Bank, based in Kenya, and Raphael... Uh, sorry? Oh, your Dabba group. I do apologise. My notes are incorrect. I do apologise, James, from Dabba group. And I knew that. I was surprised myself. <laughs> Raphael Afador, who I hope I is from the Export Trading Group, very prevalent across southern and eastern Africa. This is why I don't talk very much. I'm prone to mistakes. Um, Theo, let's start with you. So why you, you're all busy people, but you've chosen to invest your time in this project. Tell us a little bit about why you've done that. Yeah, I think um, our interest is really on, on two fronts in respect of supporting this particular initiative. So... Firstly, as, as AG Kani, we, we are true believers in the potential that this continent offers if it can be facilitated and supported in, in activation, activating its, its full potential. That's the, that's the first part, and AG Kani is really interested in playing a, a role in that narrative, um, and hence our, our investment in, 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 in this initiative. The second key area, which is of real interest for us, so one of the, the roles that I fulfill is that of the, the co-chair of the regional, regional Business Council of, of the World Economic Forum. And um, together with uh, Mr. James Ovio, uh, we, we decided that the theme that we felt most critical for the continent was around empowering the youth, the African youth, of which there's a significant and fast-growing uh, number of, of youth, most of which are unemployed, um, but probably most disturbing is are not really engaged in any meaningful contribution to, to the economies of, 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 of the continent. So we saw, this, we saw the theme around empowering youth as, as critical for us, and as it evolved, we, we saw that there's a fantastic opportunity to crowd in new technologies, as well as have a focus on small to medium-sized enterprises as a way of trying to stimulate job creation as small, uh, small to medium-sized enterprises are critical uh, uh, players in, in terms of absorbing the, the, the workforce uh, coming in, into the African market. So we then said this opportunity, the African Growth Platform, really combines all the, the areas that are of real interest to us as the Regional Business Council um, of, the, of the forum, and so very excited about the, the initiative and hence our interest in supporting it. What, what kind of technologies do you think have uh, the most promise for, for addressing the, the, the challenges we face? Yeah, so our, our initial view is that we are allowing the entrepreneurs to, in a sense, identify them as critical technologies that they think are going to help address some of the challenges. But we are guided, to some extent, by key technologies that are driven or coming through uh, the fourth industrial revolution. So opportunities for the leveraging of, for example, uh, 3D printing in distributed manufacturing for, or the leveraging of artificial intelligence in terms of some of the applications that are available, or areas where you can actually use uh, 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 what's the um, blockchain technologies, all those kind of things which will address issues around um, uh, facilitating trade on, on the continent between different regions or different countries. So there's a whole host of technologies, but the most prominent ones are probably those that uh, are coming through uh, in what we see anyway from the fourth industrial revolution technologies. Great. Brian, you're, uh, you join us from, from China. You work very closely with uh, the founder of Alibaba, who spoke passionately about Africa in the past. I'm not for a minute suggesting this is the only reason you're here, but there's a philosophy, <laughs> there's, a, there's a philosophy at Alibaba that, uh, of, of helping and, and, yeah. and harnessing entrepreneurs and small business people. So how, does that, how do you hope that's going to translate into the African continent? Sure. So from the time that Alibaba was started, um, you know, our mission has been to make it easy to do business anywhere. Uh, but what does that mean? It really means that at the time that Jack started the company, it was focused on helping small, medium-sized businesses or any um, group that was not part of the mainstream economy to get uh, connected with the economy through technology. So Jack, um, you know, he was a teacher actually by training when he, before he started Alibaba. So empowerment is really a key part of who he is and what he believes in. And the platform model that has really emerged in the uh, fourth industrial revolution as a, a means to create marketplaces is something that Alibaba really has focused on. Um, and I think now is time for a new development paradigm. I think Africa stands at a crossroad, not unlike China did 20 years ago. When um, Jack started Alibaba, in China there were 8.8 .8 million internet users. Um, if you fast forward 20 years later, there's 830 million internet users. Um, the per capita income in China at the time Alibaba started in 1999 was $800 per person. Today it's 9,000 per person in China. 
Um, so I think that we can see, and the population of China obviously is 1.3 billion people, the African continent is not that different. So when Jack came to Africa for the first time two years ago, he was inspired, he was very excited. He saw what the possibilities were for a continent to transform itself by enabling youth, enabling small businesses to become part of the mainstream economy by using technology. So the reason why you know, we feel so excited about Africa and the, and the future it has before it is because we, we know that it's been done before in a place like China, an emerging market that didn't have uh, very much in the way of infrastructure, but that became an advantage to the market just as this should become an advantage to the African continent to leapfrog and go straight into the fourth industrial revolution and uh, leverage and harness the power of youth to drive that. Um, so I, I, would, I would say that you know, LC and the team, uh, by pulling together this initiative, we're very excited to be a part of it because we see how, how much potential there is, but also how it's really important for the public sector, the private sector, the civil society to all come together to work together and align themselves towards a common goal. And that will accelerate uh, what Africa can, can do for itself by um, using this technology. Uh, and, and just stay with you for a second more, Brian. Uh, Jack, of course, is a, is a legendary philanthropist as well. He donates uh, you know, lots uh, to good causes and sport and other areas. How much of this is philanthropic? How much of this is hard-nosed business? Well, Jack is also on his personal foundation um, uh, supported uh, conservation efforts in Africa. And also, he's announcing a prize um, this year in uh, November. Uh, uh, it's an entrepreneur prize that is celebrating the success of entrepreneurs across all uh, sectors in Africa. And he's, he's committed to do 10 years of this um, prize. A uh, million dollars each year he will give to these uh, entrepreneurs because he personally believes in the power of entrepreneurship. So, you know, Alibaba is an interesting company. It's, it's a business, but at the same time, it's, it's a how should I say, social impact. But that's actually within the DNA of the company, so the two are actually not different. It, it's actually very well aligned. Yeah. Uh, James and, and Raphael, I, I have the same question for both of you, which is, you know, you're busy people, you know, you've, Elsie has got you involved in this project and got you to commit your time and, and, and resources. I'm sure she'd be you know, going around with a checkbook um, you know, after this session. So tell us a little bit about you know, how you think you can make a difference to this platform and, and, and why you want to? Well, the first thing, for me, the exciting thing about this initiative is in some ways um, we felt like at Dalberg this was already kind of our, almost our raison d'etre. You know, we began our business 20 years ago looking to work towards inclusive and sustainable growth around the world. You scratch a little bit below that, it's all about giving people the tools and the ability to improve their own lives and empowering them. And that then becomes synonymous with unlocking the power of enterprise. We ourselves were a startup business that's become a global platform. How do we build, how do we think about that entrepreneurial journey and unlocking the barriers to that entrepreneurial journey? And part of that is recognizing that Africa, which is the place with the biggest challenge around attaining sustained economic, uh, inclusive economic growth, is a place where the challenges of the continent and the opportunities for transformative business are more or less the same things. We can take inspiration from companies like Alibaba that by filling a gap, created real wealth and unlocked real opportunity for themselves and others. And so we stepped back and said, all of the work that we're doing in terms of generating new data and understanding what's, what's limiting the progress of, 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 of small business, or in understanding the application of new technology or new business models, actually finds true manifestation in the goals of this, uh, of this new initiative. Uh, and it just makes sense to make common cause with others because this is, there's more than enough for everyone to do and actually the more of us are collaborating and coordinating ourselves, the more we solve the collective action problem and the more we can attain impact at scale. So that's why we're excited and really committed to this. Uh, and Raphael, how are you going to, how are you going to contribute to this? Um, so yeah, I do, I do represent um, the Export Trading Group um, where we recently started a digital platforms uh, subsidiary um, uh, with the thinking very simply that um, uh, the future is digital. ETG has been, was founded 51 years ago and has, uh, is significantly an African company. I mean, trading in more than half, about half of the, uh, the, the countries on the continent. Um, and we, we do a lot of traditional business, logistics, you know, commodity um, in exportation, uh, input importation and distribution, etc. Um, and so we've built a lot of 
you know, relationships with, you know, commerce within the various countries, with, you know, government within the various countries, and also know-how. But where I came in was to bring that digital competency. My background, you know, co-founder, junior, etc. But what you learn over time is that to be able to build big businesses, you need real resources, real resources that actually exist already that can be leveraged with the new know-how, right? So ETG is significantly and heavily going into you know, the digital space um, and to be able to accelerate the growth of digital companies. And it's actually going in in multiple ways. One, as a company builder itself, and two, as an investor, and three, as one who actually leverages the relationships and the competence and the know-how that he has in the market to be able to accelerate growth. And so that's what we're doing now. What we have is a digital platforms, um, a subsidiary, now, we'll take ideas and take them to market and also look at, you know, various um, uh, things that are being done already in the market that we can actually catalyze, whether through investment in, in or buying companies, you know, early stage companies that are, uh, are showing potential that we can actually invest in. So, so this initiative is one that is very close to our hearts um, uh, because we get to work with various different partners that will enable us accelerate the growth of the digital economy in, uh, in, uh, in, in, on the continent. So part of the framework work that we've done over the last couple of um, weeks, for example, talks about the role of governments, the role of investors, and the role of private enterprise to be able to, and we can come in with relationships at the government level, we can come in as investors, and also as private enterprise. Uh, we can invest in things like the skills, influence policy making, um, um, we're entrepreneurs ourselves, um, so, and, and, and bring the capital to bear. But most importantly, we need to be able to build big companies on the subcontinent. We have too many small companies that aren't really going anywhere. And to be able to build these big companies, we need to be able to have some level of, some level of coordination in the way we're thinking about the growth of digital economies across the subcontinent. And that is where our work with this, with, the, with this group actually is very helpful, because by taking best um, use cases from one place and being able to use relationships to be able to get policy makers to be able to implement the right you know, use cases in other places, we're able to grow much bigger Pan-African companies. Thanks, Rafael. Right, so we have a few minutes left for questions. So have a quick show of hands. Who wants to ask questions? The microphone is ready. Anyone? No? Okay. Right, so over to me. <laughs> Happy to say. Look, um, we are clearly at, a, at, a, at something of a juncture here where we see growth modestly accelerating and we see FDI increasing and all that is good but at the same time we see a huge labor force expansion um, due to the demographic pattern of, uh, of Africa's growth. Um, so we need, something needs to be done, right? And we see and we read in the newspapers across the, across the continent, not to mention the whole world. So my question to each of you on the business side is if there is one single intervention that you could ask for, whether it's skills or better regional integration or access to financing. What is the one single intervention which you believe would be most critical in achieving a kind of breakthrough to help Africa in its, uh, in its course to develop and grow? And, uh, Raphael, we'll start with you. Well, I wish there was a big fat red you know, button that can be pressed to create the change that we desire. But if you ask me, I think um, uh, you know, African economies are relatively smaller than you know, most of the economies you see in the world. And you pull Africa together, that's when it becomes very interesting. So if we can get some degree of integration in terms of how we're thinking about digitizing the continent, um, and uh, some degree of policy integration, so when you start something in Nairobi, you go to Rwanda and you have a good idea of what you're running into there, um, that would be very helpful. And we can actually, if we can use best practices that we see around us, right? <laughs> Uh, I think just about the entire continent can learn quite a lot from Rwanda, for example, mm -hmm. with what they've done with, you know, with the economy. Or you know, cashless society initiatives, at least some part of what Nigeria has done, can be learned. Empesa is another good example. If we can actually use these use cases and implement and accelerate growth across the continent, it would be very good for, for, for building enterprises and accelerating them. Fantastic. And actually, that's a really good point. So, because we, we, we like to think positive as well. James and Brian and Thea, if you can think of a successful intervention which you've seen change the game to a, any degree as well, let's include that as well. James, you're, you're next. Um, I'll, I'll begin first by echoing what uh, Rafaela said. I think there are two themes there that really stand out that speak to Africa's unique positioning. The first is Africa is going to have to transform itself in, an era, in a digital era. And we need to make the most of digital tools and digital capabilities. 
Now, what that speaks to is how are we thinking about the critical enablers of that ecosystem, things like identity, things like the ability to make payments and so on. And I think we believe that if you can unlock that, if you can provide those basic enablers that allow the majority of the population to be digitally able to digitally transact, you will allow for folks to actually innovate and, 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 and build uh, pathways out of poverty themselves. Central to that, though, is that notion of, of market integration uh, and that notion of how do we actually create a single set of rules of the game or an integrated set of rules of the game for the continent. Because we are not in Africa going to be able to export our way to prosperity as our friends in Asia were able to. Just the nature of the state of global trade today tells you all you need to do. You, you know up to know about that. So if we want to build more sophisticated economies, we're going to need to trade indigenously across African uh, countries and find way areas of comparative advantage. And finally, and perhaps a little bit different from that, is the question of unlocking the full potential of our population. And that means the role of women as a productive asset in Africa. And we already see it because women are such a big part of, the biggest part of Africa's economy is agriculture and smallholder agriculture. And so we already see women carrying the, the bulk of, of, of value in that space. If we can be deliberate about policies and approaches that make use of you know, technology as well to make sure that women are part of driving this change, uh, I think it gives us a better chance of succeeding. We can't afford to go into this fight with one hand tied behind our back. Brian. Yeah. So I want to piggyback off the previous two comments. I think integrated market is critical. It's, it's, it's just a basic necessity. But on top of that, I would say that um, mindset shift is critical for success of, of the African uh, transformation. And that especially relates to uh, the youth uh, and the belief that there are possibilities outside of traditional career paths like you know, banking or oil and gas or even government. And that being an entrepreneur is a noble thing and a, and a worthwhile thing, but also a very exciting thing. Uh, so you unleash the power of youth in terms of creativity. And this is especially important because there is no predefined path for Africa's digital development right now. It's not China. It's not the United States. It's some other path that meets the needs of the market. And so they are the ones. So we want to celebrate those, those successes, those heroes. That's why we have a program with UNCTAD. Uh, called the E-Founders Fellowship, which is to really nurture uh, the future sort of Jack Ma's of Africa so that they can create the platforms to serve Africa. But in addition to youth, we need to engage governments and, and allow them to, to realize that they have to change the mindset of the traditional governance structure and, and really embrace what's happening now to enable and provide the opportunity to private sector to actually move things forward so that they protect the rights of, of the individuals, but at the same time don't control to the point that it stops innovation. So mindset across public and private sector uh, and also education I think is critical. Fantastic. Thea? Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I have to agree with all that. It's getting tougher. It's getting tougher and tougher. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. Right. Of consensus. Yeah. That's right. Integration but, of women, mindset shift. We've got some exactly. diversity here as exactly. well as an agreement, yeah. which is good. That's right. But, but, but I, I'll say for me maybe uh, on the back of everything that's been said, I'm very much at the point where I, I think it's, it's really about how do you execute quickly, mm. right? I, 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 the answers are all here. We've heard them. We know what needs to be done, right? It's kind of, of course, there's obviously there'll be barriers here and so forth, but we have the intellectual capability to come up with the solutions. I think that's, that's, that's a given. Our biggest challenge in this continent is execution, mm. right? And we've got to find a way to execute. And it doesn't mean we have to execute a perfect a perfect uh, um, solution from the from the onset. Let's have a minimum viable, you know, product. Let's get it out there and let's start uh, iterating and, and, and getting it better and better. And now, this is where I sort of lean on on what's been said: is how do we get to execute better? And this is one area that I'll then highlight and say one thing that I think could fundamentally move the needle in terms of implementation is is the removal of politicians. Maybe I shouldn't say politicians. <laughs> they say that the politics... See, whatever you want. It's just us in the world. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so one of the challenges we have is around policies and coming up with policies, enabling policies and so forth. That in of itself and the rate at which we do that slows down execution in many respects. And so in my view, I think rather than removing politicians, let's, let's remove politicians and give entrepreneurs the space to do what they want to do. Right? Don't hold them back. I think we always hold ourselves back. So. How do we do less policy making and more um, enabling or supporting or encouraging execution and implementation, try, try and fail, try and fail, try different things, do, do all those, those kind of things um, as quickly as possible? 
Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Elsie, over to you. So execution, we've been talking about. What are we going to be talking about one year from now when we, uh, we, we meet back here for the 2020 World Economic Forum meeting in Africa? So let me start off with uh, what I see as uh, the biggest opportunity um, in two respects. One is the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, many wonder whether it's relevant for Africa. I think that's the wrong question. It's how we engage with it. Um, as the youngest continent in the world, if we're able to harness uh, the power of youth who don't have to unlearn uh, an old way of doing things, old technologies, uh, but to be ready uh, for this new era and to be able to run with it, um, then we'll be able to move faster, see quicker results. You know, it unlocks a different way of doing things. Um, a lot of these technologies don't need you to have a degree. Right? Just apply yourself for a couple of hours and you're able to go to market immediately. Um, so that's a key opportunity. If we can unlock that, get them excited, get them fired up, um, then we will have less to do. We should be following them, not trying to drag them along. Right? So that's one key thing. Two is, as the World Economic Forum, we're a platform of platforms. So for everyone out there who's wondering, gosh, are you setting up yet another thing? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Uh, what we're trying to do is to uh, play the role of a conductor in an orchestra and just say, listen, can we just align our different efforts and know what each other is doing and see how we can leverage uh, each other's efforts. So a key uh, factor of success uh, will be to expand the group of actors that is willing to be part of this initiative um, to align their interventions uh, with those of the, of the founding members um, so we can reach more people faster. It's all about impact. And impact means the more of us working together, the more we can get done and be able to show concrete results. And then lastly, it's about leadership. Um, yes, you know, they make fun of me, especially my fellow young global leaders, uh, about harassing them and, and, and being on their case. They all have day jobs. They're very important people. Uh, but they, they believe in this. They believe in the importance of the continent, the youth of the continent, the talent, uh, the, the possibilities. And are moving from talk to action. You know, it's, it's, it, there's enough talking. We need to act, and that needs people to say, "I'm ready to be counted, and this is what I'm going to do." And you know, you can count on me. And so we need more leadership uh, from different quarters, where people don't just stare at problems, but they actually engage with them. There are no perfect solutions, but the more of us apply ourselves and uh, you know, and and learn from each other, uh, we can resolve many of these tough, intractable challenges uh, faster, even if it's bit by bit, but eventually we'll get there. There's a lot of letting free we're hearing here. We're letting through the youth, the entrepreneurs, the women, of course, so important. It's changing our mindsets and it's keeping on integrating in less small companies, less small economies, more big companies and big economy and, and, and big, big everything. Right, thank you so much indeed. Listen, we're now running over time. I've said enough. This session is over. Thank you.